Okay, so buonasera, as I will say. Uh, I am Matteo Capodaglio. I am a performance nutritionist born and raised in Italy, but I moved to Southern California. I now live and work in Los Angeles. And as our extra special guest today, we have uh, Chase Chicos. He's a phenomenal strength and conditioning coach and works with the multiple UFC athletes. So nice having you here, Chase. How are you doing? Excellent to be here. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Um, getting excited because we're getting closer. We're getting closer to to Marvin and uh, Jacare. That's a big one for us. Yeah, for sure. We will have the chance to talk about it. But I was telling the audience, but they could probably know by now from the, the accent that I'm Italian. What about you? Where are you from? Where were you born? Where where did you grow up? Tell us about you know Chase Chase's story. So uh, I'm yeah I'm Chase Chicos. I'm the I'm the owner of Chase Your Dreams Performance LLC. I grew up in a town called or a city, not a town, a, a city called Bellflower, California. It's in Southern California, located in Los Angeles County. Um, it's a you know a, a nice little area, nice suburban area. Um, there's some good parts and there's some bad parts, um, you know, and sometimes you're drawn to things that, uh, at a young age that you're not too, that you're not, you don't know any better. You, you don't know any better to do. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, I've been to Ohio lately and I really like the area. I really like the atmosphere, the, the Midwest vibes. Uh, what about you? Uh, what was your first impression when you moved to Ohio? And are you still connected to the area, to the, the people there? Absolutely. I love Ohio. I love Ohio. It, it, it was a complete 180 from what I was used to in life. You know, I come from like a bit like a city area coming from L.A. County. Um, the people in Ohio are just great people. Everyone's so nice. They wave to you when you go to the store. Everybody talks to each other. Everybody's real, real friendly. It's like a real that that Midwest hospitality, man. It's it's a, it's awesome. I do miss Ohio. Something I don't miss as much is probably the weather, <laughs> but um, I do like seasons. So I like to be able to leave the season though and go there as I please. But uh, overall, I, I do still have some friends in Ohio. I do keep, uh, I do keep in touch. And yeah, it's it's awesome to see because these, uh, you know, they're pretty proud of uh, of the things I'm doing now. So it's 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 a uh, it's awesome to stay connected and 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 draw inspiration from people who have watched my journey and watched me come up. Okay, yeah, for sure. And I mean, I'm not gonna lie to the audience. Like we know each other now for uh, over two years. Uh, we've been, you know, saying like we're been talking about our upbringing, and you were telling me some pretty amazing story uh regarding the the bellflower area and like a lot of people uh as you they are from there but they're making their their way to the top so do you have anyone that actually maybe inspired you uh in this journey i don't know any uh top level athlete or any other type of personality yeah absolutely actually uh richard sherman Richard Sherman was a guy I uh, was a guy I played with. I played football and baseball with Richard Sherman. His dad Kevin was a coach on my uh, uh, of my football team. Um, yeah, so we spent we spent I think three years together playing for the same teams. He uh, he actually went to a different high school than I went to. And then as as we know, history played out where he went to Stanford. I actually played receiver at Stanford, and then ended up playing corner in the NFL, which is a big transition. But Richard has always been a super hard worker. And and obviously we see where that took him. He was a 4.0 student all the way through his way through um, Stanford, which obviously it's not an easy thing to do. Stanford being one of the top academia places in the world. Um, yeah, so I definitely drew drew a drew a inspiration from that because seeing somebody that came from the same situation, and even though you know I took a different path and I was behind him in terms of of, of timing, um, I'm 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 still climbing my way and definitely draw inspiration from him. Absolutely. Are you? I'm just curious now. Uh, this is not something we uh, we talked before the live. I'm, I just wanna wanna ask you now. Uh, did you happen to talk to him or see him after he made it to the NFL or after he won the Super Bowl? Is still like is still like 
uh, wanders around the area or movie stays in, you know, where he plays. Now, now he plays in San Francisco, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so funny story, right? Um, this was this was like probably, I would say, seven years or so ago. And um, I actually went to a club in L.A., a day club at the time, right? This was like when I was younger, you know, when I was still still doing this type of thing. And um, I'm on my way to the bathroom and I see Richard and Richard's having a good time. It's actually his birthday weekend. And I'm like, hey, Richard, what's up, man? And uh, he looks at me. He was like, oh, how's it going? And I'm like, it's Chase, bro. And he looks at me, like looks at my, looks down, Chase Chico's. He was like so excited to, to, to come in contact with me. And he made me feel as like I was the one that was the, the, the special guy being seen, you know, it was pretty, it was pretty awesome. But, um, you know, we exchanged numbers. Uh, Richard's very busy and he's in different areas and uh, I, I don't I don't keep close contact with him now. I, if I see him, I'll, I'll definitely say hello to him. Um, but I, obviously, I wish him nothing but the best, man. That guy works for everything he has. And being a being a smart guy like he is and, and to see somebody who can make it to the top of, of where they're at with. Don't get me wrong. He's a great athlete, but that's not what got him to the top. It's all cerebral with Richard. It's all mental. He played. He's a mental player. He studies so much film. He's a student of the game, and to see somebody make it like that, definitely, definitely, uh, he earned everything he has, and this guy deserves to keep having the success that he's having. Super Bowl champion, by the way. Yeah, for sure. And also, he was one of the few that could uh, trash talk Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. He actually does. You know, both of those guys play the same game. It's a very cerebral game they play. If you understand football. And you uh, and you follow the NFL, then you then you probably know this. So with them, they're really out there playing chess, and this is this is really cool to see. Uh, it's, it's like I said, it's awesome to see Richard have his success. You know, especially against a guy like Brady, who's chasing his seventh Super Bowl. Probably the I wouldn't even say arguable, but I'm, there's some people that argue the greatest quarterback of all time. Okay, that's great. Uh, any other person from your area that inspired you or inspires you? In the uh, well, okay. I, I draw a lot of influence from uh, a guy who came from the LA area. He's a a, a well, well was was a, a well known rapper, and you know, kind of uh, actually after his life got ended, he became even more popular. A guy named Nipsey Hussle. Um, I've been following his music since uh, like 2006 or 2005, and to see his journey, to see him climb the ladder all the way to the top and do the things that he did back for the community um this is something that i draw a lot of inspiration from he kind of taught me about um ownership about accountability about responsibility about failures and and how to react to failures and um that you can that you can really do it out of nowhere like you can really you can really make something from nothing uh nipsey was a big a big big influential guy and and uh and where i'm at now and where i'm going okay 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 that's i mean i, I was unfortunate i mean i was here when the, the the shooting happened and i learned from the news i actually didn't know who the guy was because coming from italy we're still like the the main rapper from the area that we know is uh, still tupac you know yeah yeah, yeah. and of course, probably of course. nwa uh, actually a movie that i was watching a lot before coming to the U.S. was uh, straight out of Compton, nice. uh, which is is it an area close to Black Bellflower? Oh, it's right next door. It's right oh. next door. They're, they're, they actually border. Um, a lot of people that live in Bellflower now move from Bellflower or move from Compton to Bellflower. So yeah, uh, I have a lot of friends that are. I have a lot of friends still to this day that I'm that I keep very close contact with that are from Compton. Uh, you know, Compton might get a bad rap and, and, and they see these things on TV, which don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and make it seem like that's just like a, a walk in the park place. But um, I know some quality individuals from these places who, you know, are actually doing good things with their life. And um, despite the negativity that's or, or around the, the stigma that's placed around Compton and gang violence and stuff like this, um, there's a lot of people in these communities that are that are still doing well and, and still trying to to make a way for themselves even though they didn't have as much to start with you know, so I, okay. I just hope that uh they can see what i'm doing and and get a little bit of inspiration and uh as i get it from them as i get it from them 100 like well, part of the reason why i do the things that i'm doing and the reason why i want to build something so big is i want to help out 
uh, kids in this in this area, you know, back where I come from. I want to help out these kids in this area and uh, give back, give them guidance, give them somebody that can be a mentor and show them that that um, there's other ways out, uh, that anybody's able to do it with the right work ethic and the right uh, team around them. And that's one of the things. So um, in the future, I'll, I'll definitely be paying a lot forward to these kids. And I'm looking to actually do this in the very soon future. There's news on the way coming on coming on that. But um, I'm going to I'm going to wait until I get that fully established before I start speaking 100 percent on that. OK, OK, I like this. So other than these aspects that for sure are admirable, uh, what are the pillars of your philosophy, of your method, even when it comes to step into the gym because you're a strength and conditioning coach what what are your pillars of your work um so it's important for me uh first and foremost work ethic um listen work work hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard yes the mamba mentality this was got this guy was a was a, a perfect a perfect example of this although he was very blessed athletically as well but his work ethic was second to none i actually I actually know his personal bodyguard. Uh, he's a jujitsu guy. I did a lot of private lessons with him. His name is Rick Williams. Um, Rick told me like when he would travel with Kobe, Kobe would would wake up at 4.30 in the morning and hey, hey Rick, let's go. Also just, you know, this isn't recommended, but Kobe didn't sleep much. Kobe was a, was a light sleeper. He went to bed late and he woke up early. Oftentimes he would, he would be laying in bed at night and hey Rick, hey, we're gonna go to the gym. I'm gonna go get some shots up. And this is midnight, you know, midnight. Or wake up at 4 30 and he's getting shots up in the gym when nobody else is so um mindset and work ethic are definitely one of the the most our, our biggest priorities to me uh the physical stuff a lot of it you know we we can improve on and the met the the mindset also and then after that you know it kind of works hand in hand i i would i would say like a cardiovascular endurance that's one of the hardest things to develop uh so de developing your physical fitness is is very important to me because Anybody can develop strength. Anybody can can um, can put on weight or anything like that. But how long can you hold that strength? How long can how long can you train? What's your work capacity? What's the workload that you can take? Because this is gonna affect how much training you can get in without overtraining. Uh, so right right under right under the, the the work ethic and the determination to be to to achieve high le high levels of goals, I would put cardiovascular endurance okay 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 that is great mm -hmm. and going like i mean this is like um mostly like um if we want a theoretical part like we're talking about the philosophy of mm -hmm. your work when it comes to practical who are your main athletes who are the chase your dreams athletes who like who represent them well yeah, I mean, uh, who are like you have a roster of athletes? Who are your main athletes? The athletes that you know work with you on a on a weekly basis? You know, um, I mean, we know some. We already mentioned one, but who's the whole? Uh, what is the whole roster? So Marvin Vittori and Giga Chikadze are, are are the highest profile guys, and I think both of those guys em embody the chaser dreams mentality, that Mamba mentality, very well. These are two guys who who put all the work in necessary, who don't take shortcuts, who have the right mindset, who want, who both have a, a, a excellence expected of themselves and want to be champions in, in, in life and in sport. And, um, you know, those are some of the pillars that my program is, uh, uh, is built around. But we all, I also have guys that are, that are coming up and I think that are going to do well. And I feel like all my athletes, I'm, I'm extremely grateful and lucky to have guys that all embody this. I have, um, uh, a pro boxer, Tayden Beltran, who's a, who's a kid with this same work ethic. Uh, I, I have Ricardo Diaz, who's a guy coming up in LFA, who who has this same this same mentality. Who, these uh, uh, and also I just got Leandro Gomez, who both the, Ricardo and Leandro both come from Brazil, chasing their dream in America to to uh, make their make that dream a reality. Uh, this is big. This is big. You know, like a like just like you 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 know for yourself. You know how hard it is for. Uh, a immigrant to come here in the states and and really uh try to accomplish everything they set out to this is a this is a hard goal and in sport it's it's no easier so yeah they, they're just some of the guys i have christian rodriguez who's just waiting on on uh on an opportunity uh adele who's a bellator guy adele q uh adele is one of the guys who uh is looking for a fight 
Um, yeah, yeah, I'm just lucky, man. I, I got I got a, a great team of guys. I have some other ones that are that are coming up. Some youth guys coming up through the ranks, who yeah. I think are gonna are, are gonna do good things. So yeah, I'm grateful, man. I'm lucky. So I mean, you work with professional athletes, but you're I mean, I know because we work with uh, sometimes with the same guy with the same guys. We also have some uh, high school athletes that probably now are not as known, but in the future for sure they will. You know. They will they will make their statements uh, in sports. They're actually even different from uh, martial arts. For example, uh, hockey. There is something yeah, yeah. something is not actually very big in Italy. But I, I learn. I, I love to learn like about new disciplines. I already love American football and hockey for sure. He's a pretty he's a pretty tough and violent sport, which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we do not dislike actually. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can't say I dislike it. I can't say I dislike it. I, I think if I did dislike it, I'd be in the wrong place, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> actually, um, I can see Marvin Vettori having a future in hockey after he's done with MMA. Yeah, but I, I, you know, if if Marvin was born here, I I really believe this guy would have been a middle linebacker uh, for some football team. I I really believe that Marvin had the Marvin has the. <laughs> The, the definitely the hard head for it you know <laughs> yeah for sure yeah 100 percent anyway so since we're talking about marvin marvin as myself is italian and uh, you had the you know staying with us you have the the full italian italian experience yeah. so i want to ask you how it is what what are the traits of uh, <laughs> italians that you, that you learn from uh, from us so some of the traits. Uh, you want me to go over some of the traits? I mean, yes. Uh, okay. So, so I'll start with the. Uh, let's start with uh, some of the some of the ones that that uh, that I are my favorite ones. The, okay. The the stubbornness and the argumentativeness. <laughs> uh, no, but in in reality, in reality, um, I don't know. I think uh, let's touch on that real fast. I think in Italy, it's like a pastime to to argue. I don't know. I, I just think that's like a thing sometimes. It just argue for sport almost, right? <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> but sure. In but in reality, uh, one of the things that these guys have proved to me a lot is, is uh, man, these guys are workers for sure. You know, at least in my experience, the, the Italians that I know or the Italians that, that come from a certain area, these guys work. These guys, uh, they, they don't like taking no for an answer. <laughs> so they're going to strive to get the, the things that they want in life, which is a, which is a, a very necessary trait to make it here. Um, the food. <laughs> I've been enlightened on a lot of food. That's for sure. Uh, I like to think of myself as cultured now. I, I know the Italian culture. Uh, I still do things and I still get tested. <laughs> but just the other day I was eating a, I was eating a salad and, um, and uh, Marvin offered me Parmesan to put on my salad and like, like a, like a fish, I went in for the bite. <laughs> he didn't like that one too much. He also didn't <laughs> like the fact that I had pepperoni on my salad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not even going to start talking about that. I'll forget about it. But actually, you were pretty close. So you, you were telling me how you never left the United States of America in your life. I mean, probably you went to, yeah, you went to Mexico, probably. And you went to, you came to Canada, right? Yep. Canada was yeah, my oh, first time sure. to be out of the States. Yeah. Yeah, and we were this close to get you in Europe for the first time in March when this whole craziness started, like yeah. the pandemic and hell broke loose. Um, it, it would be nice to bring you to Italy, maybe for some uh, so for some workshop, enjoying enjoying the the food, enjoying the vibes, being able to argue like two weeks in a row. It's something like everyone wants to do, actually. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait. I'm gonna definitely make my way to Italy. Uh, I was supposed to go to London. That was heartbreaking. That was heartbreaking for just the whole team in general. You know, the pandemic hit, and then Marvin's fight got canceled, and he came back when I was supposed to leave, like the next day, I believe. And then these guys ended up coming back that night. Uh, yeah. But so that that was gonna be my first my first trip to Europe. I was on flight booked and everything. I was super excited. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't work out, but I believe things happen for a reason. And uh, I will definitely make a trip to Italy. I, I, I really like that's one of the first places on my list I want to go. I want to go visit Rome. I want to go to where Marvin's from and in the mountains. I'm, I'm really into the outdoors thing because obviously coming from the city, I don't get as much of that as I, as I probably should in my life. So, yeah, that's one of the things I want to do 100 percent. 
Okay, that is great. Um, talking about these athletes, there are go-getters and they always want to push more. Uh, I have a question from one of the, um, the followers that says, uh, Chase, how do you uh, address possible overtraining syndrome when it comes to athletes that like to train, 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 being always there, be first and then last mm -hmm. in your session? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a couple of different ways I address this, right? I can only control what we are doing in the training room with me, right? So in my environment, I can control that, right? So if I if they come in and right away, every day we're doing, people do assessments every once in a while. Every day I'm doing an assessment. I'm assessing people's demeanor when they walk in the gym. I'm assessing their energy levels, how excited they are. I'm assessing mood because mood is actually a big indicator of, of what we're training in itself. So I start assessing right away when I see guys and then I start talking to them. Hey, how are we doing today? What was training like? um how you know how hard or not hard was it what did you do yesterday um and we'll make adjustments based on that so right away there's a there's a huge thing that i already go through right like that's big that's big that gives me a lot of feedback right away energy levels mood um training for the day and training that they did yesterday right i have a lot of things that i can start playing with and like i said i can't control what they do in jujitsu I can't control what they do in Muay Thai or sparring, but when they come into my realm, into my area, I can control that. So if we have to, I'm willing to, and I, and I deviate a lot from the plan. Sometimes mm -hmm. I, sometimes I have a plan and the plan gets completely thrown out the window for the day or for the week for that matter. If guys are, are, are going through it at the time. So, um, one of the things I try to do for recovery is I, I start I start trying to uh, stimulate recovery, right? How do we do this? How do we start stimulating recovery? We do that with movement. We do that with movement. We just get guys moving. We get the blood flowing. We get the heart rate up a little bit, not a lot. Um, we're not going to probably do a hard strength training session. I, I wouldn't suggest that when guys come in and they're already tired. Um, now, if it's a, if it's an ongoing thing, if guys are coming in for three weeks in a row and they're beat up and they're tired, okay, maybe we need to have a serious talk about uh, with them about what they're doing in in uh in the other gyms that they're training at because that's going to lead to injury that's going to lead to illness and then you're going to have to take time off training the body starts to tell you with fatigue levels and mood and these things of what's going on and if you don't give the body what it needs it'll take it meaning it'll get injured it'll get sick these things come about right so the body's going to make you rest one way or another okay um, go ahead sorry no, no, I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm just, um, I mean, I know about, I know about the physiology of overtraining. I always like to hear the perspective of strength and conditioning because I was just saying, that's great. Uh, and yeah, so far, like talking about, you know, peaking and volume and, you know, all these different phases of uh, a training camp. We have in three weeks from now, Marvin Vittori, going against Jacare Souza for one of the great, like probably the greatest fight of Italian MMA history. Um, how do you feel about that? Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, anything. It's open. Just tell me what you think. I'm super excited for this opportunity uh, for Marvin. You know, this is like, this is one of the opportunities that he's been, he's been uh, waiting for since he got into the UFC. Um, a guy like Jacques Ray, who, who is a big name, who, you know, is, is, is legendary in the MMA world and, uh, you know, nothing but respect for the guy. But one thing I do know about Marvin is when he goes into that cage, he's going to turn in, he's going to turn it on and Marvin's going to be prepared like a special forces operative, you know, like the way Marvin pre pre prepares mentally, he has a mission on December 12th, right? And he's going to be fully prepared, all stones uncovered and every intention of fully displaying that that mission goal right which is going to be beating jacare in every minute of that fight we are prepared for it to go anywhere um and yeah so i just know i just know for a fact marvin's going to be the best version of marvin so far he'll be prepared and like i said he's going to have that special forces operative mentality where he's going to go in there and he has a mission to complete and he's willing to get it done by any means necessary Okay, 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 okay. And I mean, Jacare is known to be a great, uh, I mean, obviously a great mixed martial artist, especially known for his Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, but especially 
in the last month, I mean, in the last actually years, uh, we have like well, a guy that I consider among the greatest of all time, which is Homulo Baral, which is turning his um Gracie Baja Northridge mm -hmm. into like really a factory of champions and the level of jiu-jitsu in there jiu-jitsu for MMA is something beyond what people can expect I believe so you also had the chance to train there uh what's the feeling tell, tell us about it <laughs> you, so you know like when a you ever seen a, a little fish get thrown in a in a pool of sharks yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I was the little fish for sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't mind. I love it. Those guys train hard. Uh, where I train at and check my headquarters, guys, you know, like I the same the same Shark Tank every day, you know. So training with these guys only makes you better. Yeah, you get beat up, but it's 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 good for your ego. It's good for your it's good for your your uh, your mental state. And some points, there's also been some 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 points of jujitsu where I was like, I don't know if this is for me. Maybe I should quit. Maybe I should stop. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's just all part of the journey. Yeah, it's part of the journey. <laughs> I confirm, no problem. Uh, so, I mean, yes. Uh, uh, I mean, I've been training uh, at Cobrinha, uh, and uh, I'm telling you, it's not that the level there is, uh, is any different. So, yeah, I, I know the feeling. And I, I didn't even do a uh, competition class. So, I've been humbled by regular people. They're maybe just, you know, Purple or brown belt for sure. Like not even thinking about those, uh, as we call it in Italian, it's called the senator level. You know, when you're a senator, like yeah, yeah. Cobrini himself, his son. Uh, I mean, that that's beyond. And I never even tried to roll with Mikey Muzumachi, one of my athletes. Uh, that should be an experience as well. So, yeah, okay. anyway. sure. I, I would I would highly suggest it. I would highly suggest it. And. Uh, just to go back on uh, uh, back on that, because I had a you know H Hamilo does awesome for these guys, man. He he really does like a he really goes out of his way when these guys go out there to to give them uh, attention, because obviously how these guys compete for MMA is going to be different than how they how his athletes compete for jujitsu. So Hamilo does an excellent job of like giving Marvin, giving Benny, giving these different guys that come, uh, giving them what they need for for MMA. So that that definitely helps. And this guy is like literally a, a, a genius when it comes to jujitsu, man. Like you can look at his rap. He's Hamalo's a, a a legend in jujitsu for sure. Look up his rap sheet if you don't know. Uh, if you're if you're in the combat sports world and you don't know who these guys are, I'd highly suggest doing some history and uh, and pay attention because uh, it, it's quite cool, man. And some of these guys that don't get some of the attention from uh, the whole world, you know, like 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 a sport like MMA does, you know that. These guys have a lot of history in jujitsu, and these guys are some of the best athletes and competitors that that we've ever seen. Yeah, talking about that, shame on us because so far we didn't mention our uh, Uros Medic. Uh, Uros. Oh, we, we missed him, but actually uh, now he's uh, up north in Alaska. He's gonna come down probably next week, and he was so he's a striker. He comes from kickboxing, right? Uh, he moved to Southern California, and the first time he came, I'm like, uh, man, you know, there's these guys, very good, and, uh, you know, his name is Homulo Baral, and he's like, I, I don't know him. I'm like, yeah, you, you remember him for <laughs> sure. And, yeah, then, now, I mean, it's not, it's not that he was trying to be uh, arrogant or anything. He just didn't know because he came from a different background, so... <laughs> Uh, but now he knows for sure. Any trains, I mean, it's now that he's gonna come back. You know, uh, he's willing to to pay the prices. Everyone on the team, so that is great. And for sure, this has been a, a, a crazy year, twenty uh, twenty. So, what is your outlook on this year? What do you, you know, what 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 are you gonna bring with you of this year? What are you gonna take? What is the takeaway message from twenty twenty? So for me. Uh, I, and I, this is not to take away from like anything that anybody's dealt with through this COVID situation or this pandemic situation. Um, when Whenever there's a crisis or whenever there's these things, there's always opportunity also. And for me, this has been a, a huge opportunity to really uh, uh, take Chase or Dreams, which is the company that I started and, and run with it. Um, I was in a place where I wasn't able to like really represent it that well. I, I had to turn down athletes and, and um, 
I, I wasn't really happy with where I was headed in terms of like how I can build my, my business. And when the pandemic hit, okay, a lot of coaches were like, oh, I'm not going to train anybody. And for me, I saw opportunity because now I, I was willing to drive to people. I was willing to go train people at parks, you know, where they say it's safer to be. I was willing to, to, I was driving all over. Like I was literally driving all over. I was, I was hustling all day, man. Like I would drive to Newport beach in the, or Corona Del Mar in the morning. I would drive to Huntington Beach. I would drive back to Long Beach to Lakewood. I would drive all over the place trying to uh, to build my business and and get and keep athletes with me, yeah, who, uh, who weren't with me before. Yeah, and for sure. And I mean, we were also blessed uh, by the fact that Uncle Dana um, grinded during this time and like put a huge effort to keep things safe and and still give. Uh, opportunities to 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 the athlete that has been great because the UFC came back as the the first sport uh after this all like pandemic start so that also helped uh I, I mean if I think about it that's pretty crazy but I was able to to coach uh you were able to coach and I was able to coach during this pandemic and uh, it never happened uh to the both of us before you coach Marvin I coach Lauren mm -hmm. That was great. So that was awesome. Yeah, and 2020 is about to be over. And what's gonna happen in your 2021, Chase? Uh, real fast, I just wanted to touch on to piggyback on uh, on what we just talked about. And I was literally getting these pro athletes ready for fights in parks, like in a park, you know, doing their strength conditioning, getting them ready to go fight on 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 big events. And 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 the only sport that was taking place at the time that we were preparing in parks. I think that's something that I'll, you know, like, that's pretty cool. You know, like I'll be able to take that with me forever. And then to, to, to go into what I want to do for 2021 and what are the plans? Um, so for me, uh, just keep growing the business. Um, I, I, you know, it's kind of in this game, what I'm learning is the best coach is the, the best coaches are the ones who market the best. And this is something I'm learning. And actually, you know, I want to touch on something else on that too. Hey, what does it take to get nominated for the for the strength and conditioning coach of the year in MMA? There's not actually an award for strength and conditioning coach. It's just trainer of the year. Trainer of the year. What does it take to get nominated for this? Because I think I'm building a pretty strong resume for this. Uh, I don't know if I got to market better or what I got to do. I don't know, but. <laughs> you got to market um, way better, man. We, we, uh, we haven't lost any fights uh, this year. I'm uh, telling you one thing. I'm telling you one thing. Jordan Sullivan, which is a guy I know, he's the nutritionist, he's another nutritionist, the performance nutritionist. He's based in Australia and he works with, uh, I mean, he works with basically all the team in there. So, you know, Cara Friends, uh, Mark Hunt, um, what's the name? Volkanovski and obviously Adesanya. Uh, he has two world champions. And he has not been nominated, so. Yeah, so I, I don't know who determines these things, but uh, I was thinking about that. Hey, what's going on with that? Because I know they do an MMA trainer of the year. I know guys who have who have won it. And uh, all I know is that, you know, we just keep on winning. Maybe So maybe that's one of my goals for leading into 2021, okay? If I'm not going to be recognized this year, I at least should be nominated next year if we keep on this path. Uh, some of the other things that I that, that I wanted to do for, for Chase Your Dreams is a uh, I, I'm starting to have an apparel line. Uh, I'm going to do a, a, a nonprofit organization, a foundation that's going to come out. That that should be that's in the works now. I'm trying to get the 501c. Uh, those are a couple things that I, that I want to you know open doors and other avenues because I feel like as the platform builds, uh, so can the 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 I can extend the hand out to more people. So I want to just be able to help more people. I want to pay it forward. Um, I'm, it's going to be cool, man. I, like I said, I, I look on, I look forward to helping kids out uh, in these areas that like these kids might not have as much in group homes or foster care or, or stuff like this. Uh, I look to be a, a, a mentor and a, a guide to, to some of these people that don't have as much or some of these kids that don't have as much provide training. There's a lot of, there's a lot of kids that, that are, have, that are talented and, and um, they don't have the proper people around them. So they kind of get lost in the they get lost in the wind, you know, they get lost with doing the wrong things or they don't have the right guidance. So they're not allowed the same, the mm -hmm. same, I won't call it a privilege, but the, the same um, things that, that some of us do have. So I want to extend my hand out over there. Uh, 
and then honestly just keep building keep building the 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 my uh the training business you know i want to i want to get stronger i want to get i want to get better i want my athletes to keep winning um i'm looking for more athletes to compete i'm looking for uh some more some more level uh levels of all athletes so i want some youth i want some uh high school kids i want i want some more high school kids that i can help and of course, my doors are open to uh, any high-level competitor that that is willing to uh, that is willing to put in the work and and willing to form the right mindset. You know, who who has some of those pillars of a uh, uh, chaser dreams that we talked about earlier. Yeah, that's great that you talked about the. I mean, the the award thing. Um, it is some. I mean, is no bad feelings. You know, not being nominated. And you know, uh, I was talking with Lauren Murphy because right now I'm on a you know, for team fights, uh, fight win winning streak. And I mean, there's so many people out there that right now being a great coach, I guess, uh, you, I mean, unless you're team Grover, so you have your own, own underground network. So you have the Michael Jordans, they, they're going to refer you to the Scotty Pippins. You know, if you're not at that level, it's important to put your name out there. That's why we're doing this. It's, it's great. I was inspired a lot by, I don't know if you know the guy, he's a kickboxer, Joe Schilling. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, so he was Kick saying there's, there's a video where he talks about his idea. It's called, his brand is called Can't Stop Crazy. Um, and he was saying that when he moved to Los Angeles, um, there was no one caring about kickboxing. So they, he was shooting with his team, uh, their own promos, their own interviews. And, you know, that that was great. That's that's a great message. And I'm, you know, I'm trying to do the same with this channel. So, I mean, uh, I guess, yeah, we had like a, gr a great, a great conversation. Uh, what do people need to do uh, if they want to follow you? Uh, so on Instagram, you can follow me at Chase Your Dreams two four seven. On uh, Facebook, you can just search me by name or the my page is the Chase Your Dreams three six five on on Facebook actually. Um, and honestly, that's the, probably the best places to reach me. I also have a website out. It's Chase Your Dreams two four seven dot com where you can schedule direct consultation. There'll be merchandise available there. Um, and yeah, you can get in touch with me through any one of those avenues. Also, one of the things that I that I uh, wanted to touch on before we went is uh, is is the help that nutrition has in the game. Like people don't understand this for all athletes. Okay, I got to touch on this because obviously Mattel's nutritionist. Um, the help I, that I'm gonna I'm gonna van more the money right now. <laughs> no, yeah, hey, please, no, no, man. This, so, hey, the, the best the best record or the best uh, testimonials are the ones that that you know that you don't ask for. And Mattel didn't ask me to, to hype him up on this video at all. This was more, I think, to kind of shine some light on me and, and open up his channel a little bit. And uh, I appreciate that, by the way. But one of the things, man, is nutrition is so important for these athletes. It's so important for their, for their recovery. If, if you plan on being a competitive athlete at any level, it's going to give you an edge, right? At the very minimum, it's going to help you compete with the rest of the guys because everybody else is doing it now. Uh, it's, it's no secret now in sporting that nutrition has a, a large impact on your recovery. It has a large impact on your performance. Uh, and I highly suggest getting a performance nutritionist, not just the everyday regular who, who knows about nutrition. I would su suggest getting with somebody who has experience in with, with athletes and different kind of athletes because different sports have different demands. So this is gonna impact the performance. And I don't know how, how these athletes should be eating, but I know a guy who knows, so that's the best thing that you can have, right? I don't want to be a, a jack of all trades and an expert of none, so I stay in my lane. Uh, definitely recommend Mattel to every athlete that I that I have. Uh, actually, there's been a few athletes that I've gotten, and I'm like, hey, you, you guys need to work with this guy. So that's how highly I think of his work. And I don't. This is not like me needing to get to get anything from Mattel. Honestly, I care about results. And when we work on a team, when you have a nutritionist, when you have the physical preparation and you're practicing the skills as you need, you're going to get better results. And that's just 100 percent fact. So uh, think about that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there are some things, you know, because um, I mean, how can I say, uh, let's say with some athletes, uh, with some athlete, the work that I do with some athletes public, some athletes, they require, uh, let's say, NDAs. Uh, if I can, 
if I can describe it that way. But you know, I wish I wish uh, I I could talk to you about an athlete that I've been working on for almost a year now, and you might really hear about him within like what six months if everything goes according to plans. Yeah, yeah, we will yeah. see. That would be great. <laughs> and that was thanks to you, by the way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Word of mouth, that's great. Anyway. Yeah. Of course, of course. Go. Happy to do it. Happy to do it. Cause I know you're gonna I know you're gonna deliver. I wouldn't feel comfortable recommending you to these guys who are high profile guys. And uh and I wouldn't feel comfortable offering them to somebody or referring them to somebody who I didn't think was gonna do a good job with them. So that speaks on the level of your professionalism and your uh your skill as a nutritionist. Thank you. Thank you, Chase. Grazie mille in Italia. Thank you. Nice, not, nice talking to you. Thank you for having me, Matteo. I appreciate it. It's an honor to be your first guest. Okay, guys. So I guess for this Sunday, because it's Sunday today, no days off for us. Uh, that is it. We had uh, Chase Chicos, live strength and conditioning coach. I am Matteo Capodaglio. And thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao. <laughs>